Good morning sa inyo. Mag-almusal tayo. Well, we're going to talk about breakfast today. I'm Coco Javier and welcome to Modern Day Prophets. The show which sees the truth in everyday things. Usapang almusal. You know, they say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You can miss lunch, you can miss dinner, you can miss your snacks, but never ever ever miss your breakfast. That's what my mom always told me before. Know why? Because she, she told me that it's from the food that you eat during that meal that you're going to get the energy that you'll use for the whole day. That's why it's very important to have breakfast. And talking about breakfast, you can have any food that you like. For some people, they just eat fruits. For some people, they eat bread. Some countries, they eat uh, some sort of a pie or whatever. But here in the Philippines, we have what we call our silog meals. You know what silog means? Those are meals that are consisting of different types of food. One, for example, that I have right now is what we call long silog. We have the longganisa. Of course, the C is, what's this? Sinangag, fried rice. And, of course, who wouldn't miss the egg? It log. That's why we have long si log. You can have other variations. You can have a hot si log, which is hot dog si log. It log. You can have uh, what else? Ham si log. Ham si log. It log. The si and the log is there. You combine it, then you have a si log meal. And we Filipinos love our si log meals. That's why if you go to some restaurants, they will serve it the whole day. You can have a, an all-day breakfast. Imagine that. Tap silog in the morning, long silog in lunch, and then what do you have? Bang silog in the evening? Wow! A whole silog day. Well, for now, since we're going to eat breakfast, let me have some of our silog. My sinangan, and a little bit of the longganisa, and my egg. Okay. Well, so I have my longganisa. It's good if you have some suka with it. So how does the silog meal relate to our faith? Well, talking about breakfast, and it's December already, it's almost Christmas time, especially here in the Philippines. I'll tell you of a story that has something to do with a longganisa, the itlog, and Christmas. If I may ask you a question, who were the first visitors of Jesus when he was born in Bethlehem? Well, of course, aside from his parents, they don't count as their as his visitors. Who were his first visitors? Were it the shepherds? Were it the three wise men? Were it the angels? No, none of them. Those were the animals. And if I would translate that nativity story into a Filipino setting, I would say that in that barn, there are so many animals. And there could have been a pig and a chicken there. And seeing that Jesus was there, of course, all the animals were amazed. They all bowed down in honor and reverence. And if they were, if we could read their minds and if they could talk, probably they were talking to each other and say, hey, we have the king of the world here. We have the savior of the world. He's going to make the whole world a lot better. Not just for men, but even for all of us. And then they saw all the shepherds come. And they saw the kings come with all their gifts. And probably the chicken and the pig were talking. Hey, if all these men came here and offered gifts to Jesus, some offered gold, another offered frankincense, another offered mirror. Probably the shepherds offered whatever they have. They were talking to each other. What could we offer the Son of God? And as they were talking, the pig said, Probably not now. We can't offer him anything yet. He's still a baby. Probably sometime in the future when he grows up. And then the chicken says, Okay, say that he's already grown up. What would you offer him? And the pig said, I don't know. What do you think? The chicken said, 
Well, let's offer him breakfast. And the pig said, well, that's a very good idea. And then the chicken said, well, for breakfast, I can give you my eggs. He can enjoy my eggs. And probably you, pig, can give him longanisa. And the pig was startled. What? Longanisa? That's unfair. And the chicken asked why. It's very simple. For you to give him eggs, you just lay it. Lay your eggs and that's it. But for me to give him longanisa, I would have to die. And I would have to be cut up and offered to him. My life would have been my offering to him. And the chicken and the pig paused. Truly, there was a big difference in their offering. If I may ask you now, what would you offer Jesus this Christmas? He gave us his, himself, his very self, totally offered to us. And if I may give a little bit of advice, I would say, magpakababoy tayo. Let's be like the pig, not just like the chicken. The chicken gave his egg, but that was what? Just involvement. But the pig gave longanisa. The pig offered his life. That is what we call commitment. Giving ourselves totally to the Lord. So this Christmas season, let's reflect, pause for a while, and then pray in our hearts. Pray sincerely to God. Lord, may I be able to offer myself totally to you, just like the pig. And just like you, you offered your whole self to us, your whole life, that we may be saved. In the end, Merry Christmas. Magpakababoy tayong lahat. Once again, this is Coco Javier for Modern Day Prophets. Sarap maging baboy.